Peter's getting up here now, I'm going to kill this shit. So, <laughs> so when you think about, uh, you know, the greatest quarterbacks, or excuse me, football coaches of all time, you know, who comes to mind? Belichick, right? You know, why? Because he's won the most championships. Uh, you know, obviously, if you Google it, you, turn, you, you Google, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest football coaches of all time, Bill Walsh is one of the names that comes up there right behind Vince Lombardi, who the Super Bowl trophies named after or whatnot, right? And the reason why is not because he won the most championships. Okay, guys, hear me. So I'm serious. Not because he won the most championships, but because he had the ability to not only develop uh, the people with Blum, but he developed other coaches who won championships. So if you look at his lineage, if you Google Bill Walsh, uh, Bill Walsh, excuse me, it's going to come up the coaching tree, Bill Walsh coaching tree, and it, it shows this downline of uh, uh, championship coaches. You know, you've got uh, names on there like you know Bill Belichick, uh, Mike Shanahan, Mike Holmgren, uh, Steve Mar uh, Marucci. Mariachi or whatever, I'm not a football fan, right? So uh, Tom Coughlin, Bill Parcells, you know, these guys, you know, obviously won championships themselves. And, you know, believe it or not, Bill Walsh doesn't get any credit for championships that, uh, you know, the guys underneath him won, but he's still known as, you know, one of the greatest coaches of all times, right? The reason why is because his ability to be able to develop people. In our business, it's a little bit different, right? So in our business, um, like Mike T was saying, you know, I was the sales dog when I first came in. And you know, my, my, thing, my thing was, uh, I was very type A. How many of you guys hit the rep list in here? Raise your hand. Right? That was me. I was, you know, the first one to raise my hand. Like, yeah, I hit the rep list. You know, I was number one, number two, whatever, right? How many people have developed somebody who's hit the rep list? How many people have somebody on their team that they've trained somebody to hit the rep list? Raise your hand. The second wave of people have more stock than the first wave, believe it or not. Right? And when I understood that in the business, that's when it really took off for me. Right? In our business, we get credit for the people we train and develop. I've got superstars on my team like Noah. You know, it's in my best interest to, to groom and, and, and train and develop and make sure I pass along all the jewels of information that I can give him to make sure that he's successful because by default, I win. So the quote that I'm going to start out with is a quote by Jack Walsh. Uh, Walsh, excuse me, it's, uh, it's uh, it, before you become a leader, success is about developing yourself. Right? When you become a leader, success is about developing others. So I'm going to dig into my topic. Let me make sure I can. Perfect. Awesome. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is, you know, uh, when you talk about the, the development, it's really about leading by example, right? Being the person that, you know, you ultimately want on your team. So uh, how many of you guys have heard of the law of magnetism? Raise your hand. If you have not, look it up. It's, cool. it's uh, John Maxwell. He talks about it all the time. But, you know, when you talk about the people that you want to train and develop, the first thing that comes to mind is I want somebody who's sharp. I want somebody who's motivated. I want somebody who's dedicated. I want somebody who has grit, right? But you gotta ask yourself, are you all these things? Right? And when I came into the business, I, I'll tell you, I wasn't the person that had the most grit. I wasn't the most professional. Uh, you know, I didn't have the best mentality. You know, my work ethic was kind of, eh, you know, I, I, lucky I, you know, I, I uh, excelled when it comes to sales, so some of the things came easy to me. But, you know, I had to learn to be the things that I wanted. Like the, the type of people that I was looking to attract, I learned. I had to learn how to be these things. So a lot, a lot of magnetism just means that, you know, in order for you to be able to attract sharp people and get people to do things that you want them to do, you have to first do them yourself, right? Um, you want to be a tour guide versus a travel agent. You guys know the difference between a tour guide and a travel agent, right? Tour guide's like, hey, come on, come with me. I'm gonna take you to this place. We're gonna go on the safari together. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna feed the lions. We're gonna fight the alligators together. We're gonna do it together, right? A travel agent's like, hey, let me tell you about this beautiful place I've never been, right? It's got palm trees and it's got, you know, uh, you know, crystal clear water and all this stuff. He's going to talk about stuff and uh, places that he's never been. So you want to be able to, you know, we talk about uh, how that relates to our business. You know, you got to walk the walk, you got to talk the talk, right? You got to be willing to do the things that you're asking your people to do. The good, the, what keeps this business pure is, I'll, you know, I tell my guys all the time, I'll never ask you to do something I haven't done myself. Right? That's how I'm able to relate. That's how I'm able to empathize. This is how you know, you're able to develop people. You want to be consistent and make sure you hold yourself and your team accountable. Right? The worst thing that can happen is you start to develop, develop a relationship you know, with somebody. Right? How many times does this happen? You get somebody going, you know, they're super motivated, and then something happens in your life to where it knocks you off track for maybe a week or two to where you kind of disengage with that person. And then you try to come back around and re-engage with that person, and, you know, it's a challenge because, you know, either they've, you know, latched on to somebody else or they just don't, you know, they, they, they've lost faith in you because, you know, you, you, you're not there for them when they needed you or whatnot, whatever it be. So it's very important that, you know, when you talk about developing people that you yourself are keeping, you know, you're staying consistent in your actions and your efforts and your mentality, 
you know, in the, in the energy that you bring, right? As well as you hold them accountable as far as expectations on what you expect. And it's very easy to hold them accountable when you, you, you yourself are doing it yourself, right? The first thing that happens when you're not consistent is that they're going to point the finger and be like, well, you know, how are you asking me to do this if you yourself, you're not doing it, you know, if you're not doing it yourself or whatnot. You want to earn respect, not love or fear. And it took me a long time to realize this. And I think when, you know, Mike T talks about uh, the growth that I've had in these last couple months is because I've learned how to really embrace this aspect of developing people. Um, you know, I was the person that, you know, like uh, Guzman said, I'm very passionate about, you know, my approach. You know, I'm very direct, I'm very blunt. Some people can appreciate that. Some people are like, ah, you know, they're scared off because it's a little intimidating. You know, because when I, when I get in your grill, I get in your grill. And it's not because I'm trying to, you know, I, I, I'm looking to be uh, to develop, develop you, not dictate, and that's what I had to learn the, the, the balance, right? I had to learn, you know, I, I'm, I've got to focus more on the result that I'm trying to drive or the message I'm trying to deliver rather than my emotions. So when you talk about, um, you know, this aspect, this is, a, this is probably the most important for me that kind of made the transition for me in, in my business. When I learned to gain the respect for my guys by being transparent, you know, my guys know what they're going to get from me. You know, they know, like, you know, I'm very straightforward with them. Like, my, you know, if I tell you I'm going to do something, this is what I'm going to do. Um, you know, if I ask you to do something, I expect it to be done, right? You know, but it's, it, there's no, like, gray area when it comes to, you know, my coaching style. So you want to be very transparent when it, in, in all aspects, right? You don't want to be one way in the office, then, you know, your social media has a totally different person, right? That's it's not going to add up, and, you know, people will see through that. Right, so you want to make sure when you talk about you know um, you know mentoring and you know being the example for your guys, you're you're, you're transparent in all aspects. Um, you know you want like I said, you want to walk the walk, right? So uh, you know it's very important that you know you do things first before you ask somebody else to do it. You know obviously people have more respect for you when you're out there you know doing. And when you talk about walk the walk, it's not just you know the the, the the technique, it's the mentality as well. You know when you talk about the importance of atmosphere and driving the right mentality and atmosphere and being the example and showing your guys how they should act in the atmosphere, the things they should want, want to take away from the atmosphere, you know, um, you know, the meetings, the, you know, what you do in and outside the store, you know, how you interact with your, you know, with your peers and, you know, uh, other people around you, other leaders in the office, right? So when you talk about walk to walk, there's a couple different, um, you know, factors that play into that. Um, treating your, 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 your the pe person that you're trying to develop like a partner versus an employee. And this is where you talk about the development versus dictatorship, right? A lot of times you get the title, and I can call, I tell my guys all the time, I'll call you whatever you want. I'll call you a leader, I'll call you CEO, I'll call you director of operations, but you ain't shit if you ain't got people to follow you, right? That's what it boils down to. And so the way you're going to get people to, to follow you and want to, you know, obviously buy into what you're, you know, what you're talking about or, you know, the vision that you're trying to create or whatnot is by teaching them like they're human beings. Genuinely, you know, focusing on trying to develop them as a person versus like, hey, you know, I'm, what's in it for me? You take out that one, it, what, what, in it, what, really what it boils down to, and this is what I love about this business, is that I like people, with, I like helping people regardless, right? But when I get a direct benefit from it, obviously I'm more motivated to help this person as well. And you guys got to understand that this is a people built, people building business, right? You don't build a business, you build people, and by default you build a business. So I focus more on treating my people, and I tell the people when they come into my office from day one, hey, we're looking for partners, we're not looking for employees. I'm not looking to manage you. So if I got to manage you, we're in the wrong business, right? From day one, this is how I'm going to treat you, this is what you can expect from me, this is the relationship that we want to start out. I'm going to hold you to a certain standard. You can set expectations for me, you can hold me to a certain standard, but this is the goal that we're looking to accomplish. And if you set those uh, expectations out early on and you let them know, hey, this is what we're looking to accomplish together, You'll, 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 it'll, it'll be a, you'll fast track your way to management, and your development process will be a lot faster or whatnot. Monitor, measure, reward. So as you're going through this process with, your, you know, with the people that you're training and developing, you want to create a timeline. Right? You would never get on a plane, so you guys, all, most of you guys have flown here, some of you guys drove here from different parts of Texas, we're not, but just imagine going to the airport and getting on a plane and not knowing where it's going or where it's going to land or you know, where you're headed, you guys, it sounds crazy, you would never do that, right? So when you talk about, um, you know, develop, the development aspect of it, you want to create a timeline as far as, you know, things that you're looking to accomplish and have milestones through the process. And it gives something uh, for the guys to be excited about, you know, because they'll, they'll see their progress through the process, right? But also it allows you to hold them accountable and, you know, obviously keep track to make sure you're hitting your goals in a timely manner or whatnot. Right, so we talk about creating a timeline, you know, you want to start with the basic stuff, like, hey, you know, 
you know, we're looking to, you know, initially you want to, you know, hey, within the first, you know, a couple days that I'm, I'm dealing with you, we're going to focus on, you know, this aspect of the business. We're going to focus on the pitch, the page. You know, we're going to focus on the mentality. We're going to focus on, you know, the side by side. Um, you know, during this phase, you know, within the first 30 days, we want to focus on getting you past the initial phase of our business because most people come in overqualified. So our job, as far as development, is showing them progress through the process. If they get stuck in one phase too long, they'll get, you know, just. Uh, motivated and they'll vote, you know, they'll bow out or not. So you want to, you know, kind of, you know, let them know, hey, this is what we're looking to accomplish in this manner or this time manner, you know, this is, you know, uh, the progress we're trying to make or whatnot. You want to gauge check them as well. We have something that we just incorporated in our office. We call it Gauge Check Mondays, right? So every first Monday of every month, I'm gauge checking my leaders. Hey, so, um, you know, uh, Jose, you know, how many interviews did you do last week? How many second rounds did you do last week? How many people did you train? How many people did you get past training? You know, we're gauge checking them every Monday. This year, our theme is accountability and, and, and progression, right? And so we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're holding you accountable to make sure we're pushing you along. Sometimes when you guys don't gauge check your guys, you'll have that guy on your team that's been on your team for three or four months, and then you circle back, you're like, oh, hey, Frank, hey, by the way, what have you done in the last three months? And Frank hasn't made no progress for the last three months. And it's almost our fault because we didn't hold them accountable, we didn't gauge check them, we didn't push them along through the process, right? Um, you want to acknowledge progress. Any progress is good progress, right? So we got Miss Yasmin, right? Miss Yasmin, she's good hate that I call her out, right? So she's, her big thing is public speaking. Right, so that's our that's our development that we're focusing on Yasmin right now. She's you know just made it to management in our office. She has an extreme fear of uh, public speaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her in front of the room as much as possible. I had a fear of uh, public speaking, believe it or not. Right, the last meeting when I was talking up here, I was sweating, I was nervous. Like I I think I got it this time. Right, I'm a little, <laughs> little bit confident. Right, so you want to acknowledge progress through the process, right? Because the small milestones are what's, what's going to gain confidence. You know, uh, the big confidence that you need to you know really move forward or whatever. So you want to acknowledge when somebody's, you know, hitting their milestones. Uh, I know for me, um, you know, this is what helped me, you know, obviously develop as a person. When I first went to, uh, when I first got promoted to management, I got shipped out to, to Houston, Texas. And it's funny because uh, me and one of the leaders that came out of my office, we had two totally different experiences, right? So, you know, he initially came out, he had a team built, you know, he had $100,000 saved his first year in the business. You know, me, I was like a thousand bucks, you know, and I, I mean, that was the most I had, you know, I was taking it until I make it with my guys or whatnot. And I wasn't really growing my team as fast as he was, but rather than focus on his progress, you guys gotta understand this is not a race, it's a marathon. So, you know, other people in your office, if they're progressing faster than you, don't focus on their, you know, process. It's not a race, it's just focusing on what you gotta do to get to where you're going, acknowledging your process, your, your progress as well. Just looking up and just recognizing the milestones that you are hitting, you know, and, and you know, using that to keep excited. And for me, what I looked at when I, you know, seen, uh, you know, this this manager come out swinging, rather than focusing on like, oh, he's where he's at, and I'm where I'm at, and I'm not where I should be, and get demotivated. I was like, I'm further along than I was, you know, six months ago. And if I continue on this pace, you know, where will I be at a year from now, right? So make sure you guys are acknowledging progress. Um, make sure you're investing your time. You know, uh, who's been talked about it? You know, it's it, you shouldn't look at it like, you know, what's in it for me, because everything's in it for you. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've spent time with my guys, breakfasts, lunch, dinner, inviting them to my house, uh, you know, doing random things. You know, I've done everything from salsa dancing to getting tattoos, right? So, like, you know, whatever it takes, you know, to spend time with my guys, right? And, you know, that extra time that you spend with your guys, you know, goes a long way, right? There's only so much development that can happen inside the office. But the breakfast and, and, and lunches and dinners, you know, the, the, these go a long way because, you know, you're in an intimate situation, not intimate, like, you know, weird, because that was weird for me, like, why would I want to do dinner with the, Jamar talked about it the other day with Joey, like, you know, the guy invited him to dinner or whatnot. But, you know, those are where you have the conversations. And, you know, you're able to talk about bigger picture, talk about their goals. You know, when you talk about, you know, um, what we do and how, you know, how everything correlates together, right? So you learn how to do it side by side in the field, right? You take, um, you know, you take, uh, the last hundred customers that you signed up, and you know each of them signed up for different reasons. The majority, of, ninety percent of the customers that you signed up, you take the last hundred. Ninety percent of them are going to sign up for the choice package. They're going to sign up for three, t for three TVs, right? That's the majority of our customers, right? That we sign up, they all get the gift card, they all get the uh, uh, NFL Sunday ticket, or all get the HD upgrade, you know, and, uh, you know, whatever the package offers, right? But they all signed up for different reasons. You take Miss Bree. Miss Bree signed up because she now gets a DVR in her bedroom. You talk to Nate. Nate's you know avid football fan, so he signed up because he got the football package. You know you got James. James signed up because he just bought a 4K TV, right? They all buy uh, you know buy the the same product for different reasons, right? It's the same thing like you guys. 
When you guys apply to this business, you apply to different ads. One person might apply to a retail ad, another person might you know, apply to like a, a management training program, you know, Zach applied to a sports-minded uh, ad, you know, different things attract different people. It's all the same job, right? When you come in, really what we're looking for is people that we can take from an entry-level position into a management position to help us grow our program, right? And help us, you know, obviously manage the campaigns that we're not working with. Well, you know, when you spend time with somebody during breakfast and lunch, you get to find out what attracted this person to the business. What is their motivating factor, right? What's going to make them tick? What makes me tick is not going to make you tick. I talk about my motivating factor is my family, right? I got, I got a wife and three kids. Um, you know, my mom, I, I was able to retire her. You know, like there's different things that motivate Some people can't relate. Right? Their, their, their reason why they came into the business was the fact that maybe they were able to lead and you know, develop other people, or maybe they wanted to you know, give back to their biggest charity, or maybe they wanted to own their business. But you gotta, this is where you find out, what, you know, how am I going to you know, get this person to tick? How am I going to get the best result? How can I spin this business to be able to find out you know, what's going to make this person you know, um, uh, do the best in the business, right? QTQP, right? You guys heard that before, right? Quality time, quality people. Right? We're not trying to drag the wrong person up the boat, like trying to make, hey man, you're going to be a business owner, you got to change these things, right? And so this was something that I had to learn, right? Quality time with quality people, I was trying to make gold out of a rock, right? You ever get that person in your office, I heard somebody ask a question yesterday, but what about this guy, he's so, you know, he's so great, but you just can't do sales. Well, unfortunately, sales is 90% of what we do, and I'm not trying to develop people on sales, because you can watch a YouTube video and learn how to, you know, sales techniques or whatever. I'm trying to develop people, but you gotta make sure that we're developing the right people, right? Bring, bringing people on board. One thing I realized is that when I can track people onto my team that already had skill sets that we were trying to teach, I, I, could, I could kind of fast track the program. Rather than spend six months with somebody and tell them, hey, this is why you should wear a suit, or this is why you should talk away, you know, talk a certain way, you know, because you're trying to, you know, relate to, you know, different types of people, or, you know, hey, this is why you should, you know, be more disciplined with your, you know, outside life, you know, and this is why it's, you know, having an effect on your, on your personal life. So, just finding the right people to develop, you know, it's important. You know, you're not going to find that star, right? But you got to be able to recognize potential. You know, you got to recognize potential with the people that you're dealing with, and be able to use that as a foundation to be able to grow and develop them or whatnot. Um, coaching through phone call versus text, right? How many times have you sent a text or received a text, right? And I'm guilty of it, right? So you get a text, right? And you read it, and you think it says one thing, right? And then you respond, and you're like, well, fuck you too, you know what I'm saying? And then you go back and you read the text, and you're like, oh, that's not what he meant, or that's not what he said, right? So text, text, emails, they can be misinterpreted. And I don't mean to cuss, so I apologize. He's getting like two F-bombs, like drop, right? So I'm going to use them. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, make sure that when, you know, when you're talking about developing and coaching your guys, you're not, tech, you're not using you know, text. Pick up the phone. You know, go out, see them face to face. You know, have that conversation with them. Um, you know, make sure that you're networking. You're teaching them how to network. Be the example, right? If you show them, hey, I'm networking my guys, they take my feedback because they know I'm taking feedback from my mentors. I'm getting feedback from Zach. I'm getting feedback from Jeremy and Mike, you know. So they're more prone because they see me doing it. They're more prone to, you know, follow suit and, you know, want to take the information that I give them because they see me being the example and, you know, networking. We teach your guys, you know, obviously how to, uh, to network and whatnot. Provide opportunities for leadership development, right? We talked about Yasmin. Yasmin's going to get up there in front of the group. I want to make sure she, she knows how to, you know, uh, talk to the group. She's, she's using, I'm giving her an, uh, an opportunity to overcome her fear of public speaking by throwing her into a situation and teaching her how to run an atmosphere, teaching her how to, you know, coach and develop guys. Um, road trips, right? Um, road trips are imperative. I, I think uh, he asked, uh, how many guys have been on a road trip? Everybody should be raising their hand. Get outside your comfort zone, guys. This is where you learn the most about yourself. This is where you learn the most about your team. What better way to get to know somebody than to spend a week with them in a hotel? Right? You think you know somebody until you live with them, right? So you live, I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, right? So put yourself on the road. Get like This is where you get the most intimate moments with your guys. You get to be able to see what they're made of. Put yourself in a stressful situation. This is where they gain confidence in you. Because they're like, you know what? I was in this stressful situation, and they, you know, Frank helped me get, you know, he he figured out the whole car situation, and you know, we were out there in the cold, but we got to figure it out. And Frank's the man, and you know, blah 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 blah, right? So you want to make sure that you're using these, you know, all these tools that the business gives you as an opportunity to develop your guys, right? Put yourself in uncomfortable situations, right? Your guys see that it's going to develop them, you know, in in turn. 
the critical conversations, and I'm not talking about critical conversations with, you know, you just having critical conversations with your guys, right? You guys, you know, this is where you talk about dictator versus development. Critical conversation is not a bad conversation. A lot of times, because it, you know, it starts out critical, you're like, oh, that's a bad conversation. The critical conversation is a, 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 a conversation that needs to be had at a certain point or else it becomes critical, right? And like, for instance, like that, that, that first paycheck conversation, um, you know, the, 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 the apps versus installs conversation. That's a critical conversation that you need to have, right? If somebody goes out there and writes 10 apps their first week, but they don't, it doesn't correlate to installations, right? And they're expecting one thing and they get another. That's a critical conversation that you've got to have, right? It's a conversation. But, but teaching guys how to have these critical conversations. So not only are you having conversations with them, you're telling them the why behind the what, but you're having them, you know, side by side on your belt level as you're teaching and developing other people or having conversations, you're you're having them with you so they can see you guys having the conversation, see you know when they're supposed to be had, how they're supposed to be had, the build, break, build, you know, um, you know, that whole aspect of it. And then challenge your guys. The best educator is adversity. Right? That's where you learn the most about yourself. Challenge your guys. Put themselves, put your guys in uncomfortable situations. Allow them to fail sometimes. And then tell them why they failed. You know, it's not a matter of, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to set you up for failure or whatnot, but it's important. Failure is a good teacher. Right? You don't fail until you, this is where you get to teach them grit. Challenge your guys. Put them in situations like, you know, if there's a store that you know they, prefer, they would prefer not to work, put them in that store. Not because you're trying to, you know, you know, neg them out or anything like that, but you got to develop that mentality that, to where they understand I'm the product, I'm the, I'm the reasons why I get the results that I get, right? Um, you know, if you see them, you know, public speaking, put them in front of the group. You know, if they know that you know, you, know, you have uh, uh, whatever their issue is, challenge your guys. Make sure that you're developing development. Development, in my uh, uh, opinion, when you take all the, the big hitters in our business, and you take, you know, you got the Alex, and you got the, the Mikes, and the Bills, and the, you know, the, uh, the, the Jeremy's, and the, and the Jacobs, and, you know, all these guys, they all have different skill sets. You know, there's things that Mike does really well that, you know, Bill's not good at. There's things that Jeremy does really well that Zach's not good at, and, you know, Adam, and so on and so forth and whatnot. But collectively, if you take them and you put them all together, the one skill set that they have, besides, you know, the grit that they have as far as being able to work through, um, you know, challenging situations and to continue to stay motivated is they have the ability to develop people. And that's really what, like, turned things around for me. I currently have 23 outside deals. And I don't take credit for it, but, like, just seeing people, like, you know, that I can take from, you know, a, a regular mindset, an employee mindset, come into my business and then be able to, you know, develop them into somebody who sees bigger picture and wants to see this program grow and wants to, you know, put themselves in a better situation or whatnot, it's rewarding for me. And when you, when you learn, you know, I, somebody, somebody asked a question in one of the meetings last night, it's like, where, you know, what's that balance between you know, doing things for me and then you know, you know, trying to help other people? When you stop trying to do things for you, the more people you can help, the faster you're going to grow in this business. And when I learned that, things just turn around for me. I promise you, development's where it's at. So that's all I have. I hope you guys stick with it.